Welcome to our weekly UAS news update. Normally you would see Greg Reverdio here, but unfortunately he couldn't make it this week and therefore I will be jumping in. My name is Hayek Aslo and you might know me from either Drone Excel or from the Pixel Drone Show that I normally host together with Greg. Greg Reverdio received his Beyond Visual Line of Sight waiver from the Federal Aviation Administration last week and no surprise, the guy immediately took off and left the country for France. Even though here at the, at the office we have repeatedly pressed the return to home button, Greg has so far failed to show up. He was reportedly last seen in a vineyard somewhere near Bordeaux and at this point even his wife is slightly concerned that Greg might not have been able to establish enough satellite connections to successfully uh, determine his GPS uh, location. We remain hopeful, however, that Greg will be able to use his excellent navigational skills to safely make his way back home to the office. With that, this is the week of June 6th, 2022, and we have four drone stories for you. First, Paladin Drones receives a BVLOS waiver uh, for Class B airspace. Secondly, Exxon from the Taser Drone is abandoning their project. Thirdly, we have new drones added to the category Blue SUAS. And lastly, we'll talk about the Mavic 3 firmware update. In our first story of the week, we'll talk about Paladin Drones. This company has received the first ever BVLOS waiver for Class B airspace. And BVLOS stands for Beyond Visual Line of Sight. And their waiver is meant for the Elizabeth Police Department in New Jersey. Paladin's aircraft, the Nighthawk, is a 4G LTE quadcopter with a maximum flight time of 55 minutes and is specifically designed to be used as a drone for first responders. In their statement, they say, the FAA limits BVLOS missions to an area outlined on the waiver and the standard limit, if the airspace and jurisdiction allow it, is a three-mile radius, which is achievable using LTE. We also have a variety of built-in fill-safes, including an automatic return to home, RTH, in the unlikely event that the drone loses connection for a certain amount of time. A visual observer must have eyes on the airspace and the aircraft at all times during a mission, as well as be in constant communication with the pilot in command. As part of their drone as first responder system, Peloton offers an app called the Peloton's Watchtower. And this app is an all-in-one application that allows any first responder to deploy the Nighthawk drone with a single tap and so that you can see its live video feed from anywhere, manage the flight itself, uh, the video, the equipment records, and this system will even notify users of any drone parts that need surfacing. Paladin's Watchtower solution also integrates video feeds with other manufacturers for a maximum of situational awareness. Our second UAS news story of this week is that Exxon stopped their program that included a drone equipped with a taser. Exxon has stopped the plan to create a drone armed with a taser after the majority of its ethics board has stepped down. The founder and CEO, Rick Smith of Exxon, stated that the taser-equipped drone was intended to initiate a conversation on this as a potential solution. Smith said that the ensuing discussion provided us with a deeper appreciation of the complex and important considerations around the issue. We are now pausing work on this project and refocusing to further engage with key constituencies to fully explore the best path forward. This is what he said after the ethics board voted eight against four against the Taser drone project. Many of the people on the ethics board believed that the company was trading on the tragedy of the Uvalde and Buffalo mass shootings that had occurred recently. On Monday, nine members of the ethics board a group of well-respected experts in technology policing and privacy announced their resignations, saying that they had lost faith in Exxon's ability to be a responsible partner. And that brings us to our third news story of this week, the addition of four new drones to the Blue SUES program. These new drones are the Alta X, the Wingtra 1, the Spirit, and the EB Tech. Now, in the past, we've been quite critical about the Blue SUES uh, drone program, not only because of the limited number of options available, but also the fact that these drones uh, sometimes are lacking the capability that you would expect from more modern drones. Uh, For instance, compared to more modern drones from, for instance, Auto Robotics and DJI, the Blue SUES drones tend to be more limited in their capability as well as being significantly more expensive. 
And that brings us to the last news story for this week, the DJI Mavic 3 firmware update version 01.0.0700. Uh, with this latest firmware update, you can now, when you use the telephoto lens, which is the second camera on the DJI Mavic 3, you can now shoot photos in RAW format. Uh, and you can also choose between different frame rates for video. So both for 1080p as well as 4K, you can shoot in 25, 30 or 50 frames per second. And you can now manually adjust the ISO and the shutter speed when you fly the drone in pro mode. Furthermore, and this might even be a, a bigger improvement, it seems that GGI might have finally fixed the GPS connection issue for this drone. In the past, we have seen people uh, take up to seven or eight minutes uh, launching their drone from a cold start and being able to connect to sufficient satellites. Uh, now that number seems to have come down uh, based on our own experience as well as what we've seen on social media, people are able to uh, fire up the drone from a cold start and obtain sufficient uh, satellite connections within 20 to 30 seconds. So uh, might still not be as fast as you would as you would like it to be, but at least it's a lot faster than what we've seen in the past. Uh, furthermore, HLG, which is hybrid lock gamma, uh, is now available for the main camera for an increased dynamic range, as well as D-Lock and HLG uh, are available when recording master shots and quick shots. And in this latest firmware update, there are some more improvements, but for that, we'll refer you to the article on Drone Excel. And for all these news articles, you'll find the links in the description below. Okay, that's all we have for this week. As always, please like and subscribe to our channel as it helps us out quite a bit. And then we'll see you again next week and hopefully by then Greg will have safely made his way back home from France. So see you guys and have a great one. Mm -hmm.